Hello, my name is Dr. Katherine Walsh. I'm a gastroenterology fellow at the Hospital for Sick Children and a research fellow at the Wilson Centre for Research and Medical Education in Toronto. I am the principal investigator on a study to be published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy entitled Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Competency Assessment Tool Development of a Procedure Specific Assessment Tool for Colonoscopy. The co authors on this paper include Dr. Simon Ling, Nitin Kanna, Marianne Cooper, Samir Grover, Gary May, Thomas Walters, Linda Rabnick, Richard Resnick, and Heather Carnahan. I would like to thank the ASGE and the editors of GIE for allowing me the opportunity to publish and present this study. Thank you. Can you tell me what prompted you to perform this study? Colonoscopy is a very common procedure, yet there's no widely accepted means to assess endoscopic competence. Traditionally, skill in performing colonoscopy has been measured by the number of procedures completed. And although adequate volume is necessary to achieve competence, performance of a set number of procedures does not alone provide an indicator of one's level of ability, as there is wide variation in skill amongst endoscopists with similar levels of experience. Over the last two decades, there's been a movement in medical education towards an approach that's based on competencies. The goal of competency-based medical education is to ensure that trainees attain the necessary knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes required to practice as competent, independent physicians. In response to this movement, there's been an effort to create evaluation tools that allow for objective, reliable, and valid assessment of clinical performance throughout the learning cycle from novice to expert. This study aims to develop and establish the content validity of the Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Competency Assessment Tool, or the GCAT tool, which is a structured multi-item measure of endoscopic competence. Although measures of clinical ability in performing colonoscopy have previously been produced, our instrument adds to the existing literature in that it is developed in a very comprehensive and systematic manner and utilizes an international panel of endoscopy experts to develop the tool, thus it is reflective of clinical practice across institutions. What components of endoscopic competence does the GCAT aim to evaluate? Traditionally, a competent endoscopist has been thought of as an individual who possesses the necessary technical and cognitive competencies to perform the procedure safely and proficiently. An example of a technical competency would be appropriate use of torque, and an example of a cognitive com competency would be appropriate knowledge of the informed consent process. In starting the process of developing a tool to assess the competency of endoscopists, we did a systematic review, not only to see what tools currently exist to assess endoscopic competency, but also to see how competency is conceptualized in other domains. In addition to technical and cognitive skills, there is growing evidence that context-specific non-technical skills that underpin medical expertise are an important contributor to patient safety and clinical outcomes. Therefore, in building on the existing framework, we felt it was important to add a category of what we termed integrative competencies. Integrative competencies encompass such things as communication, judgment, clinical reason, reasoning, and ethical integrity and they allow one to integrate their technical and cognitive skills to perform the procedure in an appropriate manner. It is upon this model that we developed our competency assessment tool. The GCAT was therefore designed to assess the full breadth of technical, cognitive and integrative competencies required to perform colonoscopy safely and proficiently. What process did you use to develop the GCAT? In order to develop the GCAT, we use Delphi methodology, which is a research technique to achieve consensus on a specific topic when experts are not physically in the same location, and it uses iterative rounds of anonymous questionnaires. Delphi methodology, through the provision of expert professional judgment, can be used to generate content-related validity evidence. In this study, we use Delphi methodology to determine which factors endoscopists deem to be most important in assessing the competence of clinicians performing colonoscopy. So specifically, we wanted to generate a list of checklist items or specific steps required to perform the procedure. In addition, we wanted to generate a list of global rating items or more broad skills required to perform the procedure. In order to ensure the most appropriate experts participated in the Delphi panel, we identified the panelists in two ways. First, some panelists are leaders in the field of endoscopy as evidenced by their roles as opinion makers within national and international organizations such as the ASGE. 
Secondly, we identified people with a strong publication record in the area of endoscopy assessment and or performance. How did you develop your initial list of potential indicators? Potential checklists and global rating items to be included in the GCAT were initially generated from three sources. A survey of members of the steering group, a systematic literature review, and in round one of the Delphi survey, we asked panelists if there were additional items that we should consider. In order to minimize redundancy, the number of items were reduced by combining like items. And this process was completed by two investigators, Dr. Ling and myself. We reviewed the checklist and global rating items independently for redundancy, and then we met on two occasions to compare items and establish consensus where there were differences in opinion. How was Delphi methodology utilized in the tool development process? In order to further reduce the number of items, we carried out iterative rounds of surveys, whereby we asked Delphi panelists to indicate which items they felt to be most important as indicators of the competence of trainees learning to perform colonoscopy. During each round, we asked Delphi panelists to rate potential checklist and global rating items using a 1 to 5 point ordinal scale. In addition, we asked them to identify up to 10 checklist items and 10 global rating items that they deemed to be critical as indicators of the competence of trainees learning to perform colonoscopy. After the first round, panelists were also informed what the group mean score and number of critical ratings was for each item in the preceding round. Panelists were given the opportunity to change their score in view of the group's responses to the previous round. However, they were told that they need not conform to the panel's view. After each round, panelists' responses were analyzed. Checklists and global rating items were removed from subsequent rounds if they received a mean score of less than four and less than five critical ratings for that particular item. Based on the panelists' comments, we reworded a number of items and we also combined a number of items to reduce redundancy. The process continued until consensus was reached. The concept of consensus was predefined as 80% or more of respondents in any given round scoring four and above on the five-point scale on all remaining checklists and global rating items. What were the results of your study? 55 experts from 44 centers internationally agreed to be part of the Delphi panel. They had performed an average of 612 colonoscopies over the preceding year, and most had greater than 10 years experience in performing colonoscopy. Response rates ranged from 67 to 100 percent during the five rounds of Delphi surveys. The initial 274 checklist items and 82 global rating items that were generated by the systematic literature review and survey of steering group members were collapsed to 73 non-redundant checklist items and 34 non-redundant global rating items by combining like items. Two additional checklist items and four additional global rating items were added by the expert panel during round one of the Delphi process. It took five iterations to achieve consensus and complete the Delphi process. At conclusion, 19 checklist items and seven global rating items reached consensus as good indicators of the competence of clinicians performing colonoscopy. Many of the endoscopy assessment tools developed to date are limited by their focus on assessing the technical aspects of colonoscopy. While the acquisition of psychomotor skills is essential, competency in performing technical skills should be conceptualized more broadly to include cognitive and integrative competencies, such as clinical judgment and communication skills, as these are required for safe, intelligent performance in varied contexts. In reflecting on the relationship of the final GCAT items to the three broad domains of endoscopic competence, eight checklists and five global rating items are reflective of technical competencies, five checklists and one global rating item are reflective of cognitive competencies, and eight checklists and two global rating items are reflective of integrative competencies required to perform endoscopy safely and proficiently. The comprehensive approach to instrument development that we use to generate and select pertinent performance indicators to be included in the tool strengthens the content validity of the GCAT assessment tool. In addition, involvement of a heterogeneous Delphi panel comprised of members from diverse backgrounds related to endoscopy, such as gastroenterologists, surgeons, and endoscopy managers, as well as from a wide geographic area, helps to ensure that the final GCAT assessment tool measures the intended concept of endoscopic competence despite variations in clinical practice across institutions. Why did you choose to include both a checklist and a global rating scale in the GCAT? Checklist items have the ability to provide feedback which is focused, formative, and easily interpretable. 
They can also be used as a framework for teaching. However, checklists use binary ratings that often neglect higher level competencies such as clinical reasoning and communication, and can therefore be limited in their ability to discern nuances of expertise. As you can see on the slide, the seven global rating items reaching consensus reflect broad dimensions of performance. Global rating items have been shown to be more sensitive to level of expertise. In addition, there is some evidence that they are better at capturing more holistic components of clinical competence and competencies related to patient safety. We therefore chose to employ an assessment approach that combines a checklist and global rating scale in developing the GCAT. Can you tell me a little about your planned next steps? We are carrying out prospective studies to assess the reliability, validity, and responsiveness of the GCAT in both the clinical and simulated setting, and its relation to other performance indicators such as sequel intubation rate. We also plan to compare the psychometric properties of the GCAT to other published tools designed to assess the competence of clinicians performing colonoscopy. How do you envision the GCAT being used within the clinical setting? The GCAT has been designed to be feasible for use within the clinical setting. Development of a validated assessment tool will serve to aid trainee evaluation through the provision of a framework upon which supervising attending physicians can structure their direct observations in order to generate constructive and informative feedback. In addition, it can be used to formally document trainees' skills over time. It is hoped that integrating the use of the GCAT into training programs will help in the establishment of average learning curves and competency thresholds based on performance scores. In addition, it is hoped that it will aid in the provision of feedback throughout the learning cycle from novice to competent endoscopist. The development of a reliable and valid measure of competence also has the potential to facilitate the evaluation of novel teaching methods such as simulation and to strengthen future research aimed at identifying predictors of quality of endoscopic care. Do you have any final thoughts? Ensuring endoscopists are competent to deliver the necessary services to their patients remains a key objective of training programs, professional organizations, and accreditation bodies. Use of the Delphi consensus technique allowed for the development of the Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Competency Assessment Tool, or the GCAT tool, which is a structured multi-item measure of endoscopic performance designed to assess the full breadth of technical, cognitive, and integrative competencies required to perform colonoscopy safely and proficiently. Content-related validity evidence of the GCAT was established through the provision of expert professional judgment during the Delphi process. In addition, the involvement of an international panel of experts from diverse backgrounds related to endoscopy will help to facilitate widespread implementation of the GCAT and ensure it is reflective of practice across institutions. Research of this nature is critical to the advancement of high-quality endoscopic training, practice, and research. I would like to thank you for your interest in this study.